Thank you for watching this video. Um, this presentation I'm going to give now is a presentation I gave at the introductory event of the Teaching Maths for Social Justice Network in June 2021. Um, and the presentation title was Teaching Maths for Social Justice, Current Opportunities and Challenges. So, um, before we can talk about opportunities and challenges, it's important to talk about what we mean by teaching maths for social justice. Different people have different perspectives on this. I'm, I'm going to run through what my perspective is on it. And there are, in my opinion, there are four aspects of teaching maths for social justice. The first aspect is about employing progressive teaching approaches, you might call them, collaborative discussing, problem solving, problem posing pedagogies. Um, teaching approaches that promote the engagement of all learners with mathematics, not just those who are predisposed towards learning mathematics, and which focus on mathematical sense making. So luckily there are lots of resources around and lots of ideas around for approaches that enable us to do this. Um, the, Often these approaches are called teaching for excellence or and, and I consider them to be a necessary but not sufficient um, condition for teaching maths for social justice. They're the type, they de de develop the type of skills that mathematicians use in, in developing new mathematical knowledge and that usually involves collaborating with other people and um, posing questions without necessarily knowing the answers. So the, the second aspect for, of teaching mathematics for social justice is um, promoting mathematical inquiries that help learners to understand some of the um, real life issues they, they come across um, and help them to better understand their own social, cultural, political and economic situations. In other words, it's about understanding social issues that, that people come across on a on a day-to-day -day basis. And a good example of, the, of this is in the recent COVID-19 pandemic, everybody was um, presented daily in the media with, with lots of data around um, COVID-19 infections. And, off, and, and people were asked to grapple with some quite complex mathematical concepts like exponential growth, seven-day moving averages, to try and make sense of that data that, that's been presented in the media. Um, so it's important that people have that math mathematical understanding so they can make sense of um, the information that's being presented to them, um, which they're expected to use to, to make decisions about their, their future behaviour. Um, um, we also, in a previous research project I was involved in, um, with some teacher researchers in schools, we did come up with some ideas about other issues where the mathematical understanding is really important in order to be able to make sense of the social justice issue. Things like fair trade, things like um, voting systems, measuring inequality, how that's actually um, measured um, by um, economists and things. Uh, and the book contains some, some other ideas about that. Um, so, so that's the, the second aspect. The third aspect is, a, is about the way that mathematics is taught and it needs to be taught in such a way where learners can develop some kind of agency. In other words, they, they have the opportunity to make decisions about the direction that their learning takes. So in other words, it needs to be taught in an investigative, open-ended way. It's no good um, giving people powerful knowledge without also equipping them with the agency where they can actually apply it to, to solving problems they come across in real life. Um, and this, um, this um, picture is, is supposed to um, represent the, the, the sort of the irony of, of trying to do that. Um, and finally, the fourth um, aspect of teaching maths for social justice is an the importance of challenging common myths that surround mathematics teaching, mathematics education, exposing processes that lead to some learners becoming marginalised, um, some of the systematic um, 
um, inequalities that, that learners face. And, and opening up to scrutiny what it means to be a successful learner of mathematics. Here are some examples of um, some discourses, some myths that we need to challenge. Things like the idea that maths is a, um, the maths classroom is a level playing field where everyone succeeds if only they work hard enough and only that those who deserve, deserve to succeed end up succeeding. The idea that mathematical ability is somehow innate, it's passed on from parents to children rather than it's something um, that's um, you know, like a fixed mindset would suggest that the more you work at mathematics, the better you will get. And also this idea that setting, in other words, grouping students by prior attainment leads to higher levels of mathematical attainment. Um, that's been shown by research not to be true, but that it's still presented as if it, if it were the case. So those are the kinds of myths that we need to challenge in, in teaching maths and social justice. This is a summary of the four aspects of, of teaching maths and social justice that I think make a good um, conceptualization of, of what it means to teach maths and social justice. OK, so what are the, the opportunities and challenges that we face? Well, firstly, let's start with the challenges. And, and the first challenge is some of these ideas take a lot of time to plan. And if there are no, there are, there are very few resources, there's a scarcity of resources out there which help people to address these type of issues in the mathematics classroom. So that means it takes too much time for teachers, time that teachers haven't got because they're under so much um, pressure of workload and so forth. They haven't got time to prepare resources. So it means that, that you know, that, that it's not possible to, to address some of these issues. The, the second um, constraint is related to that. It's about the demands of the curriculum and the scheme of work. There's so much work to get through and the links are not necessarily immediately obvious um, to where you can bring these ideas into the mathematics classroom. That's, um, um, that's why the network that we've set up where teachers can come together and, and start to generate new ideas is so important to give people that support, to give them ideas where they can bring some of these ideas into the, the scheme of work without necessarily having to um, ignore the scheme of work completely. The third constraint is about the accountability in schools. Um, there's a lot of pres pressure on teachers to perform to, to standards that they're expected to um, perform to which can lead to low risk teaching, put people off from trying out some of these ideas in the classroom. Um, and that's where the sort of mutual support provided by a network is so important to, to overcome those, those challenges. The fourth challenge really is this kind of, that there, there seems to be in recent years a real emphasis, um, a real sort of encouragement, especially amongst government policy makers, um, emphasis on direct and explicit instruction, particularly in teaching of mathematics, where the argument is that students need to be um, walked through step by step mathematical concepts um, and, and um, with a real focus on the mathematical concept and, and less focus on how they might use them in applying them to solve real life problems. I mean, that, that, that's a, a, I see that as a, a challenge to teaching maths for social justice because it completely ignores the notion of student agency. I think obviously it's important that we help students to develop mathematical concepts and sometimes we'll just need to explain them in detail. But we mustn't ignore the agency of students to be able to apply them to solving real life problems and that's something that, that there's a danger that this renewed emphasis on direct explicit instruction will just ignore that that need for agency. And the, the final constraint I've highlighted is discourses of inequity that kind of focus on student and teacher deficit models. In other words, um, students underperform because they um, don't work hard enough or they haven't got the right attitudes towards mathematics or teachers are not skilled enough to help them. And, and these discourses kind of lead to the, the strategies that all we need to do to solve these issues is to help individual students to, to come up to scratch, to, to you know, give them extra intervention support to bring them up to, 
to standards of other students and to help teachers to focus in on what's the right way to teach and to work harder to to enable a small number of students to gain access to um, prestigious universities this is often seen as as a measure of success and all it does is kind of hides the systemic inequalities that, that exist um, so, so those I see as some of the challenges. So, so what are the, the opportunities to address some of these challenges? Well, the first thing is for a number of the years now in England, every school is expected to address spiritual, moral, social and cultural aspects of learning across the curriculum in, in all subjects, including mathematics. This gives legitimacy to the type of work we're talking about here. Um, you've, you've got support from, from the government in, in doing this. Um, the, the second opportunity is the recent calls from organisations like the OECD and from UNESCO for um, to look at school curricula again and to review school curricula, bearing in mind the need to cultivate the type of collective knowledge and critical understanding that learners need to, to face and to address some of the challenges we face as a society, so things like environmental um, challenges, global warming and so forth, um, economic challenges, increasing levels of inequality and other social challenges that we face, things like obviously things like the, the global pandemic we're currently facing. So that so that there that's a call from very powerful organizations for to us for us to look again at the maths curriculum. And think about how we can help students to develop the type of mathematical knowledge that they need to contribute towards that process. The third opportunity is um, the fact that um, there's a wide recognition of how practitioner research is effective not only in, in helping teachers in their professional learning but also in bringing about um, if um, sustainable changes in teachers thinking and classroom practice in other words actually implementing some of these reforms in the classroom um, so, so I that's an opportunity for teachers to get involved in, in, in some of these ideas the, the fourth um, opportunity there is highlighting the, the benefits of communities in quiet of inquiry um, the idea that actually working together in networks of teachers exploring issues, big issues facing the curriculum, um, provides the kind of mutual support that will help teachers in addressing some of these challenges that I highlighted earlier on. Um, not only in terms of um, practical classroom resources that they can use in the classroom, but also just in terms of supporting each other in overcoming some of the constraints that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. And the fifth opportunity, I, I think this is a, a really crucial one, is the enthusiasm I've noticed amongst teachers to re-engage with um, the reasons why they came into, math into teaching mathematics in the first place, which often include things like wanting to make the world a better place in some small way, wanting to help individual students to become better people, to, to become more empowered, to, 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 um, to tackle issues of what, this, what our new teacher sees, inequality in society and so on. But I think there's quite a lot of teachers who, who come into the profession for that reason. And um, w when we set up this network, it was launched in April 2021 and we encouraged people to register an interest and we asked them um, to um, we asked them a question when they were registering their interest what motivates you to want to be part of this network and it's quite heartwarming that you know what came what people said about why they want to join a network for of teachers who are interested in teaching maths and social justice um, and, and what what most of those responses had in common was a real passion and desire um, that was was coming through to do things like address issues of equality, access, inclusion in mass education, to, to engage with issues that they've been interested in for quite some time, probably since they started teaching, but maybe have lost sight of.
because of all the sort of day-to-day -day demands of teaching. Um, passion and desire to learn how to tackle um, social justice issues in the maths classroom, collaborate with other people in a network, in developing practice, developing new classroom resources and teaching ideas to share with other people. And, and there's some other um, responses there. So all of those things I think are, are quite positive and, and, and quite suggest a sort of optimistic um, vision for, for the future. And they kind of support what I find, found in some of the research that I've carried out in the classroom. Teachers in general are very interested in, in these types of, of issues. Um, and they become even more issues. They become even more interested when they hear about the success that other people are having in, in their classroom. So I'm, I'm going to finish on that note, on a quite a positive note. So, so thank you very much for watching this video and, and do um, keep in touch with the, the Teaching Maths for Social Justice Network. Um, our website is www.mathsocialjustice.org. Thank you very much.